Hello, friends! Welcome to Virtual Storytime. You ready for our welcome song? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. down there. How are y'all doing today? I feel like I haven't seen you in so long. So let's get ready for our little warm up. Get your hands ready there. We're gonna do this. You know the drill. Here we go. Boing, boing, squeak. Boing, boing, squeak. There's a story in my house. It's been about a week. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's been. I don't know. Where did it go? I want to hear it again. I look to my left. I look to my right. I look all around. <gasps> it's still out of sight. I look to the ground and over my head. <gasps> There's something on my desk. And we have got two stories today. These are the stories. Can you read the titles? So this story is our last story. It's called Pink is for Boys. And there's boys and girls in it. It's not only about boys. And the first story we're going to read is called The Blue House by Phoebe Wall. And this story is about a kid like you who lives with only his dad. And, you know, sometimes people don't have both parents some, or grown-ups at all. Sometimes they live with just the dad, sometimes they live with just their mom, sometimes they live with two mommies, sometimes they live with two daddies, sometimes they live with their grandpas, grandmas, aunts, uncles, whoever. But this story, this is the opening, is about a kid and his dad who live in a blue house. Leo lived with his dad in an old blue house next to a tall fir tree. The paint was peeling and the roof was mossy. There were leaks and creaks and when the wind blew, the whole thing shook, but it was theirs. Leo loved the blue house in winter, with its hiding places and cozy spaces. When the old heater broke, they would bake a pie just to warm up the oven. They would dance. Leo loved the blue house in summer, with his garden full of raspberries and tomatoes. He would play in the yard until the sun went down. Lately, there was all kinds of construction going on in the neighborhood. Big new apartments were going up next door and across the road. Leo would watch the backhoes and trucks out of his window. They looked like tiny toys. I don't know if you can see, but Leo is right there in the window of the blue house looking at everything. I'm worried ours will be next, he heard his dad say on the phone one night. 
but Leo knew his dad was wrong. The blue house would be theirs forever. One day, Leo's dad picked him up from school, but instead of going home, they got ice cream and went to the beach. I got a letter from a landlord today, Leo's dad said. They've sold our house and it's going to be torn down. I'm sorry, bud. We're going to have to move. Leo was angry. How could someone just take their house away? He kicked and screamed and locked himself in his room. They couldn't tear it down if he never came out. But Leo got hungry and after a while went down for dinner. I'm angry too, his dad said. So after they ate, they danced and stomped and raged together. They shredded on guitar, and Leo did a special scream solo. He, it made both of them a little less mad. Soon, the blue house began to fill up with boxes. Every day, another familiar object was packed away. When the blue house was empty, it was echoey and drafty like a hollow shell. The walls look so naked, said Leo. Let's paint on them, said his dad. It made both of them a little less sad. This new house felt empty too. It didn't feel like home. I hate it, said Leo. That's okay, said his dad. One day, Leo and his dad walked by the hole where the blue house had been. When they shut their eyes, they could see it clearly, hear every floorboard's creak and the drip of the faucet's leak. But when they opened them again, their house was gone. That night, as Leo lay in bed staring at the empty walls of his new room, he had an idea. What if we painted it? Leo said. Oh, good thinking, said his dad. Then together they mixed the perfect shade of blue and it made them both feel a little more at home. Little by little, Familiar objects began to appear in the new house. After school one day, Leo and his dad baked a pie in the kitchen. Can you tell what kind of pie they're making? Looks like apple to me. And that night, they unpacked the stereo and danced and stamped and sang until it was time for bed. Leo had been right. The blue house would be theirs forever. And with each passing day, the new house was becoming theirs, too. The end. What a good story. I really like that story. And the pictures were cool, right? So you know when you're trying to film something like story time and you get a phone call? I don't know who that is, so I'm not answering. All right. <laughs> that ever happened to your grown-ups? You get phone calls and you're like, who is this? Ugh. All right, we're gonna do a song. Let me go. Oh, here it is. I had to find my pick. So I use a pick instead of my fingers because sometimes it hurt. The strings hurt my fingers, so I use this. It's called a pick. All right, we're going to sing a song called "Down by the Bay." Now, if you're familiar with the song, you usually sing. My mother will say, but because we just read a story about dads, let's change the words and say, for if I do, my father will say. So let me do a first verse if you don't know it. Down by the bay where the watermelons grow. Sing it. 
All right. So, there's funny words, and you can just listen and laugh along with me when I say them. All right, here we go. Down by the bay where the watermelons grow, back to my home, I dare not go. Or if I do, my father will say, let's do it again. Did you ever see a fox sitting in a box? Down by the And it's by somebody named Rob, with two B's, Rob Perlman. Now, do you see what they're doing? Oh, we got a boy and we got a girl. And they got all sorts of colors on this cover. What does this look like to you? Oh, splatter paint, perhaps? Now, this is a cool story. And I want you guys to kind of tell me what you see in the picture. So it says, pink is for boys and girls. So what do we see? We see a pink bow tie on the boy and a pink shirt. And then we see the girl in a pink dress. And bows on fancy clothes are for boys and girls. <gasps> Blue is for girls and boys. And uniforms on a team. Yellow is for boys and girls. And a crown to wear. Green is for boys and girls. And grass to run on. Red is for boys and girls. And cars racing along the track. Orange is for girls and boys. And popsicles dribbling down on sticky chins. Purple is for boys and girls. And unicorns because unicorns, unicorns are so cool. Brown is for girls and boys. And teddy bears to cuddle. Black and white are for boys and girls. And puppies and kittens to pet. And all of the colors are for everyone girls and boys. And flowers and butterflies and rainbows in the sky. They're for girls and boys. The end. Oh, that's a pretty picture book. What's your favorite color? That's my favorite. I think I like blue. I think that's my favorite color. 
I also like purple and green and red. I like them all. I like all the colors. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Yeah, that's a good choice. All right, friends, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to our stories today. Can you put your hands up in the air? Wiggle, wiggle fingers way up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers. Wave them all goodbye. I will see you again next week.